so we just started the section of the thermal properties right and previously we discussed about the kinetic properties and this time we are talking about the thermal properties and in thermal properties we uh, discuss the difference between the latent heat uh, the heat capacity the sensible heat the formula of specific heat capacity and the heat capacity so these were some topics that we discussed last time and the topic we are going to start today is also uh, like the normal basic one but we have to just find out some difference between those process and those two process are known as the process of evaporation and boiling right so uh, in the properties in the first chapter of kinetic properties of matter we already discuss the process of boiling that in boiling we are going to change a uh, liquid into gaseous state right and uh, if we talk about the evaporation process so in boiling we observe the same thing that liquid actually converts into the gaseous state or into the steam or into the vapors right in evaporation the same thing actually happens over there right so what is the difference so we have to uh, discuss the difference between these two process and there is also a concept that how evaporation causes cooling and what are the factor that affects the evaporation right so basically the difference is between boiling and evaporation yes so first all of right, can i name some uh okay first of all let's define the evaporation right because boiling you already know in boiling process uh, we are going to convert the liquid state into the gaseous state right and in evaporation the process of evaporation is So escaping of energetic molecules from the surface of liquid. So this is the concept of evaporation, right? And basically, uh, in simple words we are also converting uh, the liquid state into the gaseous state but still there is a difference right so now if we want to list down some difference between the boiling and the evaporation yes yeah, so i can go ahead yes uh, you may just explain if you already know about some differences between them all right. So first of all, boiling occurs throughout the liquid. Okay. And then evaporation occurs uh, at the surface of the liquid. Okay. Boiling occurs at a fixed temperature. Evaporation occurs over the range of temperatures. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. boiling is faster and then compared to evaporation. Yes. Boiling process is faster as compared to the evaporation. So uh, basically, uh, you know about basic differences, right? So in boiling, you know that First of all, we know the difference that boiling occurs at a fixed temperature or throughout the liquid. Because when you try to boil a water, so we are actually supplying thermal energy to the water, right? And it starts to move from the bottom of the surf layers of the liquid to the top of the liquid, right? Because we know the flow of thermal energy that it will always, the hot air always flow in upper direction. So if we want to start writing the points, so the differences between them. So boiling occurs at a fixed temperature. And evaporation can be occur at any temperature.
because you observe in your daily life let's suppose if you take any container and you just put that container in the open atmosphere right so water starts to convert into the vapor form okay. and observe that uh, same container after one day or two day so definitely there will be a difference in the volume of that liquid right it is not fast as you already mentioned just like the boiling because in boiling we are providing uh, extra support in the form of thermal energy so that thermal energy helps the liquid to transform into the vapor state right and if we consider another point in boiling process bubbles are going to be form in boiling process but there will be no bubbles form in evaporation right oh yeah because this is sure. also a very clear difference yes can we can we say that in boiling an external source of heat is provided but in evaporation it's not uh yes you may also uh, mention that because when we are writing the temperature so with the reference of tem temperature we are uh, getting the same meaning right it's up to you if you want to write uh, like that in evaporation we don't require any source of heat but in boiling we required a source of heat right so that is also valid but if you okay. are writing a uh, two or three points in your answer so try to write a different point right because if you write one for the temperature and second one for the source of heat so they will compare them as a single point right so that will be a weak response so always try to write completely different points from each other right but that point is also yeah. right. if you are not going to write in the form of temperature so with the reference of source of heat that is valid but if you are writing with the reference of source of heat so uh, try to avoid writing with the second point reference to the temperature because if you write these two points so these are like the same thing right the meaning of these two points are same okay okay and a uh, boiling occurs throughout the liquid and in the definition of evaporation as we already mentioned escaping of energetic molecules so energetic molecules are always on the top because the bottom molecules are already having pressure on them as we already discussed in the chapter of pressure as far as you move into the de deep of the liquid surface so pressure starts to increase on the molecules so that's why uh, evaporation only occurs at the surface of the liquid and you mentioned that uh, the boiling process is a fast process and evaporation is a slow process any other point i don't have any okay so uh, basically as when, you uh, yes when when a substance like evaporates it cools down the average temperature of the substance the leftover liquid itself but in boiling that does not happen okay you may also write that point that in evaporation if it will cool down so it will again convert into the same state right so you may also write that one because uh, that point is uh, like the important point and they individually ask about that that how evaporation is a cooling process so we will discuss that point individually and if you want to uh, write another point so as you mentioned the concept of the heat so if you want to write both the concept related to the heat and temperature right so you may write like this
So this point is also valid. So let's suppose if you uh, forgot any point. So there are multiple points. So you may take the second point over there. And in evaporation, we don't require any specific uh, heating source. Uh, it only gains heat from the surrounding, right? Yeah. So it actually works on the heat source that is gained from surrounding. And one point uh, that you mentioned related to the cooling process. So there is an individual topic or there is an individual concept uh, which actually asks you about explain how evaporation causes cooling. Okay, uh, in our daily life uh, experiment, we observe that whenever, uh, let's suppose if we are in a swimming pool and if we come out from the swimming pool, so even if your temperature is of the surrounding is very much high, like 25 degrees Celsius, 28 degrees Celsius, right? So when we are in swimming pools, so the situation is completely different. And when we uh, start to walk out from the swimming pool and it starts to move in normal surrounding area, so for very short time interval, you feel temperature very low around you, uh, around your body, right? You feels like that your body temperature is very low. You feel like uh, there is a coldness uh, around your body or your temperature of the body will be very low. So actually this happens in our normal life, right? If we are on a, like any water park or if we are playing over there and after some time when we come out from the water so in normal atmosphere we feel that the temperature of our body very much cool down right or very much low as compared to the surrounding temperature right it happens or not yeah so basically uh, you need to explain uh, because in questions they will ask about it or sometimes in past papers you find this question that explain how evaporation causes cooling or you can say that how evaporation uh, is a cooling process. So you need to explain this phenomenon. Any idea? So how many marks would it be? Uh, two? two minimum two mark. Minimum. Okay. Maximum, uh, they asked way for three marks, but that was in old past papers, uh, because molecules sometimes... at the surface of the liquid evaporate, mm -hmm. so the hot molecules, uh, uh, escape, okay, leaving the cooler molecules behind. Okay, like that. I don't, I don't know. Yes. So basically, the main idea is the same. That is related to the high energy molecule compared with the low energy molecule, right? Because in definition of evaporation, uh, we talk about the energetic molecules that escape from the surface, right? So basically when we are in water, right? So water molecules are around completely around our body. And when we come out from the water surface, right? So there are some water uh, vapors or water drops on our body, right? So basically uh, when they get energy from our body, right? One, the one source of energy is from the surrounding. And the second source is our body. Okay. So molecules are also getting thermal energy from our body. Second, they are also getting energy from the surrounding. Okay. So now they are getting more energy as compared to the normal situation. So the energy, sorry, the molecules on the surface of your skin starts to evaporate if it gains the enough amount of energy to escape from your body. Right. So basically when they are going to escape from your body, so they take a thermal energy from your body and evaporates in the atmosphere. So that's why the temperature of your body will cool down. Okay. Yeah. So this is the process. 
and as you mention uh, in your answer that high energy molecules and the low energy molecules so that point is a valid point so you can uh, phrase your answer like this as more energetic molecules escape from the surface of liquid less energetic molecules are left behind So basically the overall energy uh, of the liquid actually falls and uh, or if you consider your body. So basically the overall uh, temperature of your body cool down as compared to the normal temperature. So that causes the evaporation, uh, a cooling process, right? Yeah. So basically the overall energy So do we say overall thermal energy or like internal energy? You may use uh, the term accordingly because we are still uh, learning some new terms so that's why I am writing some basic terms right that you already know about and after the completion of all the thermal section so you can recognize different type of heats and different terms. So then you are automatically able to answer with reference to different terms, right? Liquid falls. And cooling occurs, right? So this is the explanation of uh, why evaporation causes cooling or how evaporation uh, is a cooling process, right? Any question? No, sir. No. Okay. Since uh, the boiling is the old process, we already uh, studied about much related to the boiling. We already performed this experiment many times in our home, in laboratory sometimes or you observe somewhere in the lower secondary classes, someone is actually showing you the boiling process, but evaporation process is slightly different from it. And uh, if we talk about some factors, so this is another important topic related to the factor affecting the evaporation. So any idea uh, what will be the factor that will increase or decrease your uh, value of evaporation or the rate of ev evaporation? Any wind increases because the molecules with the wind is off. Okay. Uh, can you repeat? Temperature? <laughs> what? Temperature? I just yeah. learned that. Oh, humidity decreases it. That's also similar. Okay. So basically, uh, if we just list down the points, so you mentioned humidity and uh, second, you mentioned temperature, right? Any other? These two points are valid points. Any other point uh, that helps you to identify that how evaporation can be increased or decreased? Humidity, temperature are Temp valid. Temp yeah, okay. I don't have any other point. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's suppose if we just we 
can consider these factors we can write from internet also right but discussion is more important let's suppose if you have normal 500 ml bottle right any mineral water bottle and second in second situation you are having a tub or any container right or a bowl so both contains water so in which container uh, the evaporation will be faster wait a second you repeat sorry i was using there google are, uh, basically there are two containers yeah right uh, two containers in the sense that first one is the normal 500 ml bottle right of energy drink or like any mineral water bottle right and second thing is the normal bowl that we use in our homes and we fill both the containers with water so in which container uh, you think that evaporation process will be greater solar radiation surface area presence of impurities intramolecular okay i got a uh, multiple points you read it on everything yeah so i just copy that after we will okay so really... yes so basically uh, if you got the points from the google so basically the example of the bottle and the ball actually gives you the concept of surface area right in ball you Wait, know oh uh, yeah so most of the diffusion factors are the same as the evaporation factors right yes ah uh, okay so uh basically this is the process when we are using open container right so in open container it will be easy for molecules to escape from the surface right and uh, you know that if you have a very uh, chill water bottle with you in a summer season and you are walking on a road and there is very high temperature around you so basically you observe that there are some drops of uh, water that actually on the cap and on the top of your bottle right so basically they want to evaporate from that surface right but since the cap is uh, tightly packed over there and there is no open area for the molecule so that's why they stick to the wall they stick to the cap okay so that is also due to the evaporation process so the first factor you mention is the factor of temperature and a uh, temperature will be directly proportional to the evaporation or inversely proportional directly proportional directly proportional right directly proportional means if we increase the temperature so definitely your evaporation increases uh, rate of evaporation will automatically increase this right so the first thing is the directly proportional concept increasing temperature increases the rate of evaporation so this is the first point and uh, the second point you mention is the point of humidity right and the surface area so if we talk about the surface area so increasing the surface area will definitely increase your rate of evaporation right so increasing the surface area increases the rate of evaporation
okay uh, let's suppose if they ask you to explain the point that why increasing the temperature will increases the rate of evaporation explain in terms of molecules so are you able to explain this one for temperature yes for temperature because sometimes they ask you that we know that increasing the temperature will increase the rate of evaporation but can you explain in terms of molecule how this uh, so an increase in temperature causes the causes the increase in the kinetic energy yeah. so the molecules move faster and the vibrations overcome the forces of attraction allowing okay. them to escape yeah. into right. molecular forces as this came my example today i don't know okay so basically at higher temperature because we already discussed that kinetic energy is directly proportional to the temperature so if you increase the temperature so molecules will get more energy and their kinetic energy will be greater so at higher temperature there is a greater percentage more energetic molecules right yeah so that will increase your rate of evaporation right so this is the basic concept so always uh, try to figure out that what actually going on in that process that actually changes the things like this right because you know in exam they mostly ask in terms of molecules so this is the reason in terms of molecules right there are different way to phrase the answer it's up to you and in the second the surface area so basically it is also simple it allow a more number of molecules to escape from the surface right yeah so greater area allows more molecules to escape okay uh if we consider the third point the third point is related to the humidity okay uh, is black background okay for you all or it will irritate you because i never no, asked you it's, 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 it's much better than white sir it is fine yes because yeah. when i use white so on white i don't know why the color combination are not a uh, like good one for me i try different it hurts, it hurts the eyes yes because you are taking yeah. uh, different classes and you are using laptop or mobile phones or tablet for your past paper because nowadays all things are available in digital form so that's why i try different uh, combination but i like this one so that's why because some one don't like the black one they ask that use the white one so that will be better no so the the color combination is good yes so a uh, basically increasing the humidity what will happen it will decrease the evaporation or increase the evaporation increase think about the... I, i don't know i don't know okay uh, basically in humidity you already have a liquid vapors or you can say that a very tiny liquid molecules in your surrounding right just like in rainy season your surrounding is uh, like more humid as compared to the normal uh, surrounding so it means that will decrease your rate of evaporation because your uh, surrounding temperature is already very damped or like the wet self uh, wet atmosphere right so basically in humidity your rate of evaporation actually decreases 
the diffusion gradient is not that steep, right? That's all. Yes. So that decreases the rate of evaporation. Because there are already uh, like tiny uh, water molecules in your surroundings. So there is no space or the temperature of the surrounding is not enough to supply energy to the molecules to escape from the surface. And further, if you likely want to explain this one. So there is a very simple concept that water molecules are uh, already present in the air. And uh, in the humid condition, the water molecules are already present. So it will be difficult for uh, the new molecules to make a space, right? So it will be difficult to make a space and evaporate the new molecules into the atmosphere, right? And uh, the next point will be the wind or the pressure. So if we consider the definition for the pressure or the condition for the pressure, so increasing or decreasing the pressure, what will happen with the rate of evaporation if we decrease the pressure or let's suppose if we increase the pressure. So increasing Inversely. the pressure, inversely proportional. No, it, for a constant volume, I think it, hmm? no, how do you say this? Increasing yeah. the pressure increases the temperature, so it should increase the evaporation, right? Yeah, I think so. That's right. So basically, uh, we are talking about the pressure. So pressure is force per unit area, right? So if your atmosphere is applying more pressure, so it will be difficult for the molecules uh, to move into the atmosphere, right? Just like if you take a piston oh, and if you okay. fix your piston, right? So if you fix your piston of the container, so that will create the pressure in the container. So it will be difficult for molecules uh, to overcome that pressure or overcome the force of that pressure. So that's why a pressure is inversely proportional to uh, the evaporation uh, rate of evaporation right so increasing the pressure will decrease rate of evaporation and we already discussed the problem that what is the problem in that so the problem is or the explanation is that lower pressure will enable molecules with lower energy Because if your external pressure is very low, so even if a very low energy molecule that have enough energy to escape from the surface will be able to move into the surrounding. But if your pressure is very much high, so the maximum amount of energy or the molecules that have maximum amount of energy will only move into the surrounding or into the atmosphere, right? Right. So this is the process. So lower pressure, high evaporation, high pressure, low evaporation. Another point is the wind. 
just like in a daily life example you know that whenever you want to dry any cloth so you just make that uh, cloth uh, spread freely and just hang over certain height so we never hang cloth like in the contracted form or like in the compressed form we try to expand the maximum surface area of the cloth and then hang on the wire or any other surface right wait so is this wind speed Yes, this is, is this wind speed. Oh, okay. So normally we hang a uh, clothes or wet clothes in open area because we know that in open area there is high probability that molecules of the air will move with high speed. So that wind speed also increases your uh, rate of evaporation. Because sometimes if you consider the example of in your room, so in your room you are having fan or AC uh, running out there. So there is a different condition in your room. But if you consider a normal uh, atmosphere condition, so if there is an open area, so in open area, you know, there is a very high probability of wind over there. So basically, that presence of wind increases the rate of evaporation. And uh, one more point or one more factor that is important that will affect the evaporation that is nature of liquid. Nature of liquid, what does that mean? So basically, if you consider a normal water and oil, so which liquid will evaporate first? Water. Water one, because the density of the water and the viscosity or the thickness of the water is less than the oil. So it will be easy for the liquid molecules because their intermolecular forces are weak as compared to the honey or as compared to the oil. Because Which is an oil highly flammable? Yes. So why doesn't it evaporate easier, faster? So basically, uh, you know that if you just start to flow the oil or if you just start to flow the glycerin or a different honey, if you take the example of honey, so they flow very slowly as compared to the water, right? It means they have very high or greater intermolecular forces as compared to the water, right? So if you... If, those molecules want to evaporate into the atmosphere. So definitely they required much greater energy as compared to the energy required by water molecules, right? Because they already have a strong bond uh, within them in the molecules or in the layers of the molecules of that honey. So basically, first of all, they required energy to break that bond and then they required some more energy to evaporate from the surface. Okay. So basically, uh, if your liquid have weak intermolecular forces, so it will be easy for you to evaporate from the surface. And if you have a strong molecular forces between the molecules of liquid, like any other type of liquid like oil and honey, so it will be difficult for those molecules to evaporate in the atmosphere, right? So we can say that. Volatile liquids have a fast rate of evaporation. And if you want explanation, so your explanation will be due to weak intermolecular forces
it will be easy for molecule to escape right any confusion no so these are uh, different factors that will affect well yes yeah, sir i do have one one question okay uh what's volatile uh basically the meaning of the volatile is like less dense liquid or the internal friction between the layers of the molecule is very less right okay understood the rate of flow of the liquid is faster right all right and if you compare with the honey so you know that in the layers uh, there is very high friction so that is non volatile right yeah or you can also write less uh, dense liquid have high rate of evaporation right and the greater dense or the liquid with greater density have very slow rate of evaporation okay so uh, these are the factors that actually affects your evaporation and if we consider some questions so in your questions okay we only discussed last time the mcqs Okay, let's try some uh, theoretical questions. Okay, now let's try to find some question. This is related to solid liquid gas. This is the basic one. Conduction, microwaves. Heat capacity. Okay. Because in this situation, when we uh, we can also electrically heat up, so electricity will also include in this concept. So let's suppose if we consider a basic question. So a saucepan of water is placed on an electric hot plate, and the water is brought to the boil. as the water boils it changes from a liquid into a gas describe in terms of the molecules three ways in which a gas differs from a uh, liquid so you can see question is very basic and very simple right still they will ask for the three mark in your exam uh okay so you may just uh, give me points that is in your mind related to so basically you need to just differentiate between in terms of molecule what is the difference between gas and liquid wait can we say about the fixed shape fixed volume yes so basically they are asking oh. the that thing okay so uh, you know that if we write down the points so in gases we have where would it be in terms of molecules in terms of molecules uh, with the reference of the molecule like the motion of the molecule the distance between the molecules the bonding between the molecules the structure yeah, of so like this three for three marks uh, mm -hmm. gases have weak intermolecular forces you know forces Uh, the energy of the molecules in a gas are much higher compared to a liquid. Okay. And then gases have no fixed shape or no fixed volume, and no and no fixed shape volume. Okay. So basically, uh, gases have. Can we talk about compressibility? 
yes can you repeat compressibility, compressibility. yeah so basically those all points that we discuss in the property of kinetic property of matter so all points are valid for this question right because all points are related to the molecules if you are writing that molecules are far away from each other so that is also in terms of molecules right so you may also choose the basic yeah. so in gases we are having a weak intermolecular forces and opposite in liquid and you mention the compressibility point so gases are easy to compress and expand liquids are not able easy to compress and expand okay i am writing in uh, just a uh, bullet points right you may complete your yeah, yeah. things right because you already know we already written that one and the third one is molecules are far uh, yes you may also uh, write energy point it's up to you now complete rest of the part by writing the the liquid and in the part b in order to keep the liquid boiling it is necessary to keep the hot plate switched on right because we know we are using electrical method to heat up explain why energy must be supplied in order to turn a liquid at its boiling point into a gas so you may read question by yourself because i know uh, there is confusion in the question if you read it one time so read question by yourself and then try to answer that what actually you got from the question wait can you repeat uh you may read the question right by yourself yeah because there is confusion when i uh, just read aloud the question so might be you don't get the concept what that what they are asking about explain why energy must be supplied in order to turn a liquid at its boiling point into a gas hmm. yeah so it's basically uh to overcome the for the intermolecular forces of attraction okay so uh, basically in question the important points are in order to keep the liquid boiling right because you will get uh, your boiling point and the upper surface or the upper molecules of the water surface starts to evaporate right but you needs to continue uh, the boiling process right so they already mentioned that it is necessary to keep the hot plate switched on so that will continue the boiling process right so they are asking why energy must be supplied right so basically they are asking about the first statement in first statement they give you the concept and in second part they are asking why we required or why we still required energy even we started the boiling process so why we still required the energy to continue the boiling process right so that is the question so you know that the problem is that once the molecules start to evaporate from the surface so still for the other molecules or to break the intermolecular forces or to break the bonds between the molecules that are on the lower surface right so you required more energy okay so basically we required energy to overcome intermolecular forces or to break the bond
between molecules, right? Yes. Yes, sir. If you were, if you just say intermolecular forces, isn't that the same thing? Yes. As between and, molecules. Yes, you can also write that. And one more important thing, since uh, we uh, the energy we require to overcome the molecular force or to break the bond, so definitely the molecules are also doing some work, right? So you already know about the concept of the work done. So basically some energy converts into the work done and then the rest of the energy helps the molecule to escape from the water surface, right? So second point you can write like this. So basically work is done as the molecules separate or the bond. So this is the answer, right? Yeah. So in the next question, in many countries, solid salt is produced by trapping seawater in large shallow ponds and letting the water evaporate. So figure 11.1 1 shows salt being produced in this way. So the first part is state two ways in which evaporation differs from boiling, right? So they are asking about the difference. Yeah, so evaporation occurs at the surface of the liquid, boiling occurs throughout, uh, boiling occurs at a fixed temperature, evaporation occurs at any temperature. Yes, so we already discussed about many different points in detail. Right, so you may just copy paste any two points from here over in this question. So that is not much very difficult. And in second part, describe in terms of water molecules, what is happening as the water evaporates. So this is the question. Because uh, in the first part of the question, there is only a situation that what we are doing. But the main thing is they are asking about the evaporation and the boiling. Yeah, so for this one, molecules at the surface of the liquid gain kinetic energy and mm -hmm. start to move faster. Okay. They expand and overcome their forces of attraction and then escape as gases. Yes. So basically now they are again asking in the terms of molecules. So they always ask in the terms of molecules because we already studied about kinetic property. So that's why they will ask always you about in terms of molecules, explain this or explain that. So they will, and we already discussed that escaping of energetic molecules from the liquid surface. So basically when water evaporates, so you know that the water molecules escape from from the surface and uh, there are multiple points right like uh, the molecules with less energy will not able to evaporate or the speed of the remaining molecule decreases, right? 
or you can also write that uh, that the uh, molecules get kinetic energy so then it they will start to escape from the surface right so you may continue this point because kinetic energy from the surrounding and it starts to skip. Right? And secondly, a uh, state why the ponds used in this process have larger surface area. So that is very simple. So that more molecules will be exposed and to the surrounding and be able to absorb more kinetic energy. No, energy. So very simple point. Heat energy. Yes. Or you can just simply relate uh, that larger surface area will increase your rate of evaporation. Because question is for only one mark. And the last point. The last part they are asking state why this method of salt production does not work well in a country with a cold climate. So that is also a factor that affects the rate of evaporation. Okay, somebody wants to answer this one. Uh, this was a country with cold climate. Man. Okay, so basically in cold temperature, what actually happens? Yeah, can you have an idea? It won't evaporate, so the salt will be weird. Yes, so basically uh, in cold temperature, uh, sorry, in cold climate, your temperature uh, will be low over there. And when temperature decreases, so rate of evaporation will also decrease because both are directly proportional, right? Yeah. Because decrease in temperature will also slow down the process of pressure. Right? So this is the reason that why uh, this method will not work in the cold countries. Okay? And uh, from now, I will send you some uh, like four or five questions in the group before the next class. Whenever you try to practice the question, you may solve those questions and send me back in the group, right? So I will get the individual response uh, from you. And I will also attach that uh, responses from your side into the same PDF file, right? So that will right. like the homework. And uh, also, you know that when you have some questions to solve, so definitely you uh, solve them before the next class, right? And since all of you are solving the same question, so if you find anything difficult, so we will also discuss in our class, okay?